Welcome to another day in the matrix, waters above crypto. I hope you all had a beautiful weekend. I'm sending you all love and high vibrations. Today I'm going to jump into the Bitcoin and XRP charts to go over the recent weekly close and discuss my thoughts as we finish off the month of September and the next four trading days. And today I'm starting a sale for my mastermind course until the end of the month, so I'll share more details on that in a moment. So if you're new here, we do cryptocurrency technical analysis and combine it with gematria, numerology, and astrology to understand these markets. Feel free to subscribe and turn on the bell notification to stay updated on when new videos come out. And make sure to give this video a like and share this channel with other conscious people to help grow this community. Also, I am currently running a sale for my mastermind course until the end of the month on September 30th. So for those of you that want to learn how to do technical analysis and combine it with Gematria, you can join my mastermind course with the promo code in the pinned comment below for a discount. My email is in the description box to get in contact with me for access to the course. And with that being said, let's take the red pill. So I would like to start with tomorrow's date numerology. I was discussing a little bit last week in regards to how this whole end of the month would probably be a little bit confusing as the whole month itself has been. And we have the 9 2021 giving us that 24. Of course, the 24 coming back to the letter X. X being the 24th letter in the alphabet. And then also the 24th letter is Omega. Omega is very powerful for those of you that study the esoteric code. So we have Jupiter's Zodiac logo also comes back to that 24. We have that right here, Zodiac of Jupiter. And another thing I was thinking about is when you actually look up what this Zodiac logo is supposed to be, it says that it is Jupiter's Thunderbolt or an eagle. But more importantly, this Jupiter's Thunderbolt is something that I've started looking into. And I'm really interested in how this comes into play with the 77 in Chaldean. And this 7 number is very, very important. Another thing I could show you with the 77 is today's date numerology being the 9 plus 27 plus 20 plus 21, giving us that 77. That means today, September 27th, gives us that 77, Jupiter's Thunderbolt. 77 in Chaldean, most pure cipher. It's really interesting how this all comes into play by the code. And then we also have today being the transition into Mercury and in retrograde, and Mercury and retrograde giving us some interesting numbers with this 111 in the full reduction cipher. Again, let's go to Mercury retrograde, learn a little bit about it. We've had three this year, we're in the third time of this transition and we could see the dates as such and i'm going to actually break this down a little bit in the bitcoin chart the price action on these dates but more importantly today is september 27th and we're in mercury and retrograde at this time so it's really amazing to see we're getting that 111 and also with just retrograde we're getting that 111 and why is this so important because we also get that 57, and you're going to see how this all ties together. So this 57 coming back to Society of Jesus, Society of Jesus giving us the 57 in the Chaldean Most Pure Cipher. And what's today? September 27th, which is the formation of the Society of Jesus. September 27th. You could see that right here. It's incredible. And we have even more crazy stuff to come along for the ride with this one because today, the September 27th date is the 269th day of the year. 269 is the 57th prime number. So for those of you that doubt this code, here it is, guys. This is beautiful. We're seeing today, September 27th, 269th day of the year. 269 is the 57th prime that 57 coming back to Society of Jesus on their birthday, the same exact day. <laughs> and then also that 57 tying back to retrograde in the full reduction cipher. It's absolutely incredible how this all ties together. So another thing I've been thinking about as well is how September 29th will actually be the 270 
first day of the year, which is the 58th prime number, and 58 coming back to XRP, of course, in the English ordinal cipher. But also, I'm interested in this transition into the 29th because 929 2021 gives us that 25, and that 25, of course, coming back to the ticker symbol of Bitcoin, BTC, in the alleged ninth month of the year september in the gregorian calendar but of course we know sept or septa actually means seven and we're getting that seven in the full reduction cipher this is all adding up also the date of the 56th prime was also quite recently as well of course because we are moving into the 57th prime tomorrow or sorry, today, excuse me. So this is really amazing how this is all tied together. Let's look at the moon calendar real quick. So you can see where we're at. We've transitioned through the full moon pretty much by seven days. We also are pulling into a new moon on October 6th. So this is kind of the final moments before we switch energy and Bitcoin starts essentially heading to new all-time highs by mid to late October. And this has been my call for months. So Mercury in retrograde, definitely something we're going to talk about in today's video. I'm really interested in this. And then, of course, that 77 that we were talking about a little bit earlier. Just one last thought. We had Jupiter's Thunderbolt with that 77 in the Chaldean cipher. And just to recap, it is the 77th anniversary of the Bretton Woods Conference. We are currently in the 77th year since this event. And for those of you that haven't studied this, please do go ahead and do such. But today's a very important day because it is the birthday of the formation of the Society of Jesus, 269th day of the year, giving us that 57th prime number. Absolutely incredible how this all comes together. So let's discuss a little bit more about the Mercury and retrograde analysis. For those of you that have been getting a little bit scared about this, because I've heard multiple people, even in my community, bring up this idea that it causes dumps. And uh, let's just look at the charts. So we have here, we're going to go back to the Mercury and retrograde dates. So we have from January 30th to February 20th. You can see right here, I started a box from the 30th to the 20th of February. Let's zoom in and see what happened. Well, that doesn't look like a dump to me. <laughs> the Bitcoin price from the day of open on retrograde to the last day went up 62% and then actually followed. So if you were to buy the dip before retrograde upwards of the peak high, you made a double. 100% gains in 24 days. Where's that 24 powerful? Well, like I just showed you, 9 27 2021, giving us, sorry, tomorrow's date, the 28th, giving us that 24, and of course, that 24 coming back to the X. The X is very important. That's why they're giving you this Elon Musk character and his Twitter to manipulate this market. They're giving you that in the exoteric, but the esoteric is what we're discussing, the truth. But they're giving you this guy and his Twitter account to make you think that he's actually creating price volatility. It's nonsense. This kid name this guy named his kid X. He has SpaceX. He had X.com before it became PayPal. The guy's obsessed with this shit. So X is his letter, and this is all about the ritual of moving into that new world of having self-driving cars, AI robots, essentially the the new industrial revolution, I'll call it. I don't even want to put a number in front of it. It's essentially just the new world that we will enter. And that guy is the uh, sock puppet of the show. So we have this clear rally of Mercury retrograde. And then we are going to go to this one. So we could see, just to confirm all of our dates, we have from May 29th till 20, sorry, till June 22nd. And that's from right here. 30th moving over to the 22nd essentially and from open down to close that's an 8% loss 8% so if we went from wick to wick from before till after that's a 21% loss so those of you that uh you know pay attention to altcoins altcoins lose 20% in a single day we've seen it happen with ethereum we've seen it happen with xrp we've seen it happen with cardano okay so this type of move is nothing in crypto this isn't a dump. This is just sideways consolidation before essentially creating a support and continuation to the upside. So if you bought retrograde at all this year, you made a good choice. OK, so people that think it's going to create reversals or end the bull run or people talking about like, you know, the 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 death cross on the four hour chart, you know, all of that shit. It's overthinking. We've been talking about the previous bull run cycles in the past. 
The past two bull runs have shown us time and time again, September is a very confusing month. It essentially has the most sideways and down price action out of all the rest of the bullish months during a bull run. So where are we at with all of this and why does this matter? Well, let's look at our recent weekly close. Let's discuss a little bit more of the technicals. Then I'm going to break down a little bit more of this firmament chart that I've been showing you guys. And let's just remove the drawings really quickly. Now, so we had yesterday was the weekly close. We can see that we actually did close below this orange moving average, which is the 21 exponential moving average on the weekly. I was discussing how that's a bearish indicator when we're closing below the 21 on the weekly. The same way when we're closing below the 21 on the daily, like right here, we typically correct and we haven't gotten above it since. So just consider all this one step at a time. So we have right below the 21 on the closure. And why am I not worried about this? Well, for one, it's very important that we remember that this bull run is much more like the 2013 bull run. There was a very long, drawn out period of moving to the upside without back testing this 21 exponential moving average. You can see essentially from around this time of year last year on on the 21st of September, it was the last touch point of the 21. Then it took all the way up until <laughs> 33 weeks later. <laughs> it took all the way up until 33 weeks later for us to even back test it. And that was when we got our larger correction. So just be open minded to this bull run is nothing like the 2017 bull run, which you can see right here was amazing. We just kept retesting, retesting, retesting over and over again before the bull run ended. This 21 orange moving average was a perfect indicator. This last bull run in 2017 was much easier to navigate. It had way less retail involved, way less money involved, way less central bank printing involved. People couldn't buy crypto from their iPhones. Also, there was very little leverage trading, if not no leverage trading. Right now, we have 100x leverage trading. We have people buying crypto from every corner, nook and cranny of this earth. It's very different. But the structure of this bull run is much more like the 2013 cycle. And I've showed that time and time again on this channel you can see right here that i'll go to the index chart we'll just quickly wrap that up and then we'll move on to the firmament analysis so when i zoom out you can see that this bull run right here that happened 2015 through 2017 it was just a nice beautiful run up straight to the top just back testing the 21 exponential moving average on the weekly over and over again until topping out in december then you have this bull run right here which essentially stair stepped up it went first stair step sideways second stair step sideways and then it finished off around the new moon of December. So if you look at this structure where we pulled up in a straight line all the way to uh, April, excuse me, you could see right here, straight line, highs in April, then correction, holding some support, moving up slightly into September, just like right here, moving up slightly into September, a little bit of sideways, and then once end of October hits, it just rallies in a straight line. We are in this process, in my opinion, and it would be almost identical to this right here. If we were to zoom in, it's still very similar. Where we are topping out into the August, early September time frame, pullback, and then continuation. We're just getting through this little moment right here. Let me quickly show you the monthly chart to make some sense of this. And then that will also kind of give you guys a little bit more data. So September, even during a bull run, is historically a red month. So let's look back to right here. This is the 2017 bull run. You could see right there the one red month that's noticeable before the end of the run, September. So you had right here about five green candles, one red month, and then continuation three green candles until the end of the bull run. So let's go back right here. You can see, actually, it probably may be noticeable on this chart. So you have our monthly. Let me break it out of log. And you can see... September 2013 before the end of the bull run was the one little red month that we got for continuation. It looks absolutely silly on a linear chart. <laughs> Just like crazy green 450%. <laughs> Anyways, so what I'm anticipating here is this would most likely be a red monthly close, a closure that's below 47,000. And also we're just maintaining structure because we have the low, the higher low, the higher low. OK, of course, in the short term, if we're looking at like the daily chart of the 12 hour, we are in a short term downtrend. We have a high, lower high, lower high, high, uh, low and a lower low. 
So lower, low, lower, low, lower, low basically a downtrend. Now we're in somewhat of a descending wedge. I don't really like talking about pattern trading. I am very aware of it. It's just not really a sophisticated way of analyzing a cryptocurrency chart. When you're doing Forex, when you're doing traditional stocks, sure, you can talk about like all these crazy patterns, but ultimately at the end of the day, what's been showing people the truth, especially with my work is going back in the previous cycles and just looking at the energy and then seeing how the full moon plays a pullback and the new moon plays a micro cycle top or a little pump. So by next new moon, I would anticipate we are either retesting the previous highs in the structure or actually breaking them. So let's look at that firmament analysis. This is a pretty interesting chart. I went over it this weekend during my red pill episode when I was um, giving the technical analysis podcast for the weekend. And what we see here is this top blue trend line trend arc, I guess you could call it when we're in the log scale is playing perfectly. Sorry, I didn't change it to log right away. So we can see right here, topped out, topped out, and then here we have it topped out, and then clear touch points here, one, two. So even if we're just playing it off of this curve right here, it's a very strong trend. And then we could see on the bottom side, the orange band, boom, 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 perfect. Even on the Rosh Hashanah pullback and the pullback of the recent full moon. So this bottom side support is beautiful. And we could see that naturally we'll be leaving this area sometime tomorrow. Um, unless we just start to dump and that's totally in the cards like there's downside targets which would be this bottom side wick right here on the lows of 39,800 and then there's I suppose you could consider closures anywhere at the 40.1 so 40 41,000 40,900 would be your closures but ultimately like this just looks like it's forming structure in a reversal at this time to the upside so until we're breaking this wick right here of 48,800 we're still in a downtrend. Ultimately, that would be the, the main level to break. And then, of course, you would have the local highs. What's, what's important about this, though, is this firmament chart is really solid for Bitcoin. We showed that back in uh, pre pretty much when my channel started. We were using this main firmament right here, and this was a textbook firmament. I know I've talked about it so many times in my videos, so if you guys are brand new here, please go ba back and watch my previous videos. But more importantly, this, this was a beautiful arc. Now, could we see something like this happen where we escape the arc and then we actually try trade on the outside before breaking through it, let's consider that. So right here, that would be totally in the cards. If we broke through this today and then traded on the outside up until the monthly close, getting down to the wicks and then essentially just bouncing out into the new moon of October. Is that in the cards? 1000%. So just be considerate. We can go up, down, sideways, that is how it all works. Now, what are the probabilities? Well, we have the charts that tell us in the past new all time high for Bitcoin by the third week of October. So anything on the downside is a buying opportunity for Bitcoin and the altcoins. Bitcoin is actually going to be in the process, in my opinion, of switching into being more dominant in this market as we get towards the end of October. So between the end of October transitioning into November, I am expecting Bitcoin dominance to start getting back to 50 percent and then upwards of 60 percent as we finish off the year. It's a very unpopular opinion, but that's the way that bull runs typically end. And you kind of want that. If you're an altcoin maxi and you're somebody who has no Bitcoin, Bitcoin rallying first is what brings liquidity to the altcoins later. So if you study this time of the year in November, Right here, when Bitcoin started approaching new highs in January, go back and look at the Ethereum chart. While Bitcoin was already double its previous all-time high of 2017, Ethereum was just retesting its previous all-time highs of 2017. At this time, everyone was not talking about Ethereum. They thought it was boring. They were making fun of it. And then right here, when it pulled back and then rallied again, we saw Ethereum literally just go up in a straight line. That has everything to do with Bitcoin dominance. So I am thinking that will happen again as we transition through the end of the year. Essentially, Bitcoin hitting an all-time high in December and then Ethereum hitting an all-time high in January. It's just how the liquidity flows through this market. It goes one at a time from Bitcoin to the big caps to the mid caps, small caps, shit coins, and then the bull runs over. But by then, by the time it gets to the shit coins, Bitcoin's already pulled back, Ethereum's already pulled back, etc. So it's just the, the dominoes falling. <clears throat> now, 
we can see that the retrograde analysis is not giving us any signs of warning. Actually, it's given us good signs because pretty much every time you've bought before it, you ended up buying into what looked like profit. <laughs> so that could be said as well. Another thing is we have this firmament analysis. It looks like we're almost breaking through. One thing we could quickly touch on is the idea of the 56 to 58 day bottoms. You guys have probably heard me talk about that tons of times on this channel. So this looks like the the, re, the last lows that we can measure from. And if I go from here, 56 days, that actually brings us to tomorrow through the 30th. And then if I go to this final dip before that pumped up, and I go 56 days, you can see that that brings us to around the 30th of September through the 2nd of October. So pretty much the next four or five days is where we're going to probably see a local bottom before Bitcoin starts to rally into a new high. I would just be patient right now. Don't get crazy and anticipate anything that's red between now and October 2nd is probably pretty solid because we've seen time and time again what these new moons bring us. These new moons bring us tops, guys. Like, people want to deny it, but it always brings us bullish price action. The only exception would be the time frame around the eclipses, but we don't have an eclipse until November. So, of course, that's another layer that I just threw at you. I don't want to make this too complicated. When I discuss astrology, it's typically from the uh, perspective of you utilizing gamatria but with eclipses retrograde and uh, moon cycles these are all things to consider you could go back in the charts and you can map all those things out but we've shown how every time we get a peak it's around a new moon new moon new moon new moon even recently the peaks around new moons and even when it's bearish around the um eclipses that we had back here it was still peaks into new moons so it's just something to consider again we are very close to a new moon i believe we have one on october 6th bada bing boom right there so october 6th that's the date to start expecting green and upside for bitcoin and ethereum and the rest of the altcoins so let's consider a little bit of normal ta <laughs> for those of you that are more inclined to that sort of stuff. There's a lot of moving averages going on. I'm going to remove all the drawings and we're just going to have fun with this for one second before we move into the Ethereum, uh, sorry, the XRP analysis. You can see right here that the 200 exponential moving average is playing a pretty decent support for the most part. We had this one liquidity dump, but then a quick green candle buyback. And then since we've been holding its support, another thing we could consider is this 382 fib that might be a little bit hard to see, but you could see right there that ever since we've recovered from this little uh, Twin Towers candle for formation we've had holding support on the daily closures at the 382 and because the steepness of the eight simple moving average we're actually probably going to start closing above this uh pretty soon and this will level out now i am not full blown ready to be excited about upside until i see this yellow moving average cross bullish above this 55 simple moving average on this daily chart the same thing goes for xrp so pretty much when this gets crossed this white moving average gets crossed to the upside by the yellow it'll look something like this so this yellow i want to see it go up and then i want this to go cross and once this gets done right here is when we expect mayhem for bitcoin and cryptocurrency as a whole because remember when bitcoin does well the altcoins do well when bitcoin does really really bad the altcoins get fucked. So it's important to pay attention to at this stage of the bull run. Another thing I guess we can entertain is this right here. We have a little bit of a downsloping resistance. This downsloping resistance will probably be tested uh, after October 3rd. Again, this is in line with the thesis of getting out of October 2nd and moving to the upside. So let's recap all the things I've been discussing. I haven't used the word crash. I'm not saying we're going to like drop any like to any crazy levels. I'm very conservative at this time. I just believe we'll be sideways until this is ready to get out of this energy and move into the new moon of October. So now let's move on to XRP really quickly. A couple things to discuss. We have our recent weekly closure, the weekly close coming in perfectly at the 21 exponential moving average so that's beautiful we can see very similar to bitcoin actually within a hair of this uh 21 orange moving average right here so that's very good to see also on the daily we can see we're still trading below the 21 once we get above the 21 that's a good sign for everything including bitcoin 
just sideways at this time. And let's look at our fibs. We can see the 236 has yet to be back tested. So remember I said the 86 cent target was the lows. I was very adamant about that and we're looking pretty good at this time. We also have this down sloping uh, resistance, which is a little awkward because some people might disagree with it because of this little head formation. But more importantly, we can see that it's been a very solid trend line. The thing about trend lines that I've learned through my extensive study of technical analysis is they suck when you're doing TA with crypto. Trend lines are just bad, okay? So when you do them, you have to be a little bit more experimental. I use them to see where the energy of the coin is headed, not to be able to catch wicks at the top or catch wicks at the bottom. It's very difficult to use trend lines because we have 100x leverage in this market and so much volatility. So what I like to do is just look at it from a perspective of closures. And you could do that very easily by switching away from candles and going to area chart. And this gives you a much better picture of what's actually going on. So for those of you that are new to TA, I actually teach this in my mastermind course. You want to be on the area chart or the line chart when you're learning it because these candles really mess people up. They spend way too much time looking at these candles and they get caught up in these wicks. And these wicks are really big shakeout moments. You could see right here, if you saw XRP on the daily open at a dollar eight go all the way up here to a dollar 23 14 percent green but then the day still ended up losing all the way down here it lost 15 percent and ended a red candle okay so these wicks are not good for people that are emotional or new traders you have to be very careful um, and that's why i like the line chart when i'm teaching people who are new to ta so all in all, this is just holding structure on the 236, just like I've been talking about for weeks. I anticipate sandwich between the 382 and the 236, so that gives me a downside target of the 85 cent level, upside target of $1.06, until we start breaking daily closures above this wick right here. And then ultimately this wick right here, we're pretty much in a downtrend. Okay, of course we're in an overall downtrend just like Bitcoin, where we have our to our yearly highs at this uh, $1.90 level, and then we can see lower high, lower high, lower highs. Well, this would be the lower high, obviously. And then we are currently in a micro downtrend with low, lower low, lower low. So I'm going to leave it at that. We have a little bit of time to get through. I gave you guys a ton of information to last you the next couple days. Please rewatch this video if anything was confusing. Lots of information in it. Again, I am running a sale on my mastermind course until the start of October. We have a lot going on in October. I'll actually be working on an advanced trading course for those of you that want to get into leverage trading and learn how to actually trade this market to earn crypto. And that will be releasing in November. So October is going to be a big month for me. I'm really excited. Excited to start seeing new all-time highs for Bitcoin as we transition into November, just in time for my trading course coming out. And then anyone who purchased my mastermind course in the past will be getting a discount on that trading course. So this is a really good opportunity for people to get in on that course if you haven't already to be able to get a little bit of a discount when that new trading course releases in November. So enjoy the rest of your day in the matrix. Much love.